Hi, welcome to my altar. This is an altar to Aphrodite, or the goddess Aphrodite from the Greek pantheon. I'm a Hellenic pagan, so I primarily venerate the Greek gods. Not all of them, because there's a lot. And the main ones I honour are Aphrodite, Hestia, Hermes, and a couple of others which are more occasional sporadic offerings. This is the only altar I currently have in my house. It's in my spare room on a little side unit. This statue I actually bought in Rome. So it's not actually a statue of Aphrodite, it's actually a statue of Venus. But it's very sentimental to me and we carried her all the way from Rome on the plane home to England. And it was very stressful, but she arrived in one piece. So she's the statue that I use. It was quite a few years ago now, so there is some sentimentality attached to this statue. On the left you can see some roses, the pink roses, and tulips. It's getting towards the end of winter here in England and I was very excited to see some tulips in the shop so I bought those as well. I often give her fresh flowers as offerings so that's usually what sits on her altar. On the right is a beeswax candle and obviously I chose pink because pink matches. I tend to only buy beeswax or soy because they're a little bit better for the environment. And they burn more cleanly which I prefer. I don't want to burn sort of paraffin. Three crystals that are sitting in front of Aphrodite's statue are rose quartz and clay quartz. I don't actually have strong beliefs around crystals, I just think they're pretty and that's basically it. I kind of think that the placebo effect, if I'm entirely honest, I don't really believe all the wild and wondrous claims about crystals but that's just my personal opinion on the matter. In front of the crystals you can see a incense burner. This is made of acrylic, it's not too bad but I probably would like to get something a little bit more sturdy and probably in the colour white to make it match better. The incense I'm burning in offering to Aphrodite is a rose incense and it's made with slightly more natural materials and I'll show you that in a moment. Aphrodite is currently the only altar I have. I don't like too many altars because quite honestly I don't like clutter. I find altars very cluttery. I did have an altar to Hermes but I ended up dismantling that because it didn't feel quite right and I ended up honouring him mostly outside anyway. The other goddesses I actually honour frequently is Hestia. She doesn't have a permanent altar because the whole house is an altar to her. I also have a lovely soy candle that I burn in the living room which is kind of the main hub of the home. I will say a prayer when I like that altar candle to her. Anytime it runs out I just put a new candle out and I dedicate it to her verbally. The altar is quite minimalist. I prefer to keep my spaces very clean, very simple. I like lots of white space and I don't like cluttery altars. In terms of practicality and in terms of the aesthetic I enjoy in my home, I don't like clutter. I don't like lots of objects. I like to be able to clean things very frequently and be able to move things around easily. Too much stuff on things is visual chaos to me and actually since Aphrodite is the goddess of beauty I feel like she appreciates symmetry and cleanliness above all things <laughs> so I do my best to keep that for her. It's part of the way I honour her. I make my offerings to Aphrodite on a Friday because that is her day and I will show you in a moment some of the things that I offer to her. So here are the things that I regularly offer to Aphrodite. So the first one is this organic goodness masala incense. Uh, these smell really good. They have slightly more natural ingredients and they don't smell as synthetic as some of the other rose incense I've tried. This is actually one of my favourites so I regularly offer her a stick of incense on a Friday. The next item is a beeswax candle. I sometimes offer her white candles. To be honest, the altar is either pink or white, generally. I don't really like red so much or other colours. It doesn't really work for the way I experience Aphrodite. I stick to pink beeswax candles or white. These burn a bit more cleanly than paraffins, so that's why I burn these. Next item is rose water. This is a really easy way to offer to Aphrodite. You can buy these in food shops. I bought this in my local supermarket in the world food section. It was in Sainsbury's if you're from the UK. This was like under two pounds. It's gone up because of inflation but it used to be like 99p. This is used a lot in Persian cooking. I'm actually half Persian. This water is actually a really good offering to make to my ancestors as well. It smells beautiful and you can put it in your bath if you want to. All you need to do is offer it like you would a standard libation. There is a specific way to do this within Hellenism. It's an excellent easy offering and really inexpensive and roses are very much associated with Aphrodite. Really align with her energy I feel. Now Let's just pretend this is honey. <laughs> I don't really consume honey. When I've got a beeswax candle, I tend to prefer soy. I just haven't been able to find candles like this that are made of soy. 
so I use beeswax to try and stick to more like plant-based things. This is Canadian maple syrup, so I would potentially offer this to her. Probably less often, I'm more like to give rose water, rose incense, or burn a candle down in her honour. Yes, you can use honey, you're okay with using honey. Or if you're vegan, you can use maple syrup. One of the things I do is to dedicate my beauty routine to Aphrodite. Every time I moisturise my face, I'll say a prayer and dedicate that action to her, obviously because she is a goddess of beauty. This is one of my pieces of makeup by RMS Beauty. It's like an organic and cheap colour. This is a really beautiful pink colour and I use this on my cheeks. I like the packaging because it's recyclable. Another offering I would make to Aphrodite is by speaking one of the Homeric hymns dedicated to her. Oh, there she is. It's the shortest hymn to Aphrodite. I use these as offerings by themselves. And there is a few others that are much longer. As you can see, there's a hymn to Aphrodite here, here, and here. I do recommend this translation. It's Penguin Classics. And it's translated by Jules Cashford. So I really like this because the language is a bit more modern. Thank you for watching my minimalist auto tour. I'll see you in the next video.